Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down how I create high quality content for social media, but also just videos in general. We'll discuss how I plan and conceptualize my videos, the gear I use to create all of my content, but also talk about techniques to create better and more engaging videos that I've learned over my six years of creating content. Now planning is the most important part of any video and as a creator who puts out multiple pieces of content every week, gathering and conceptualizing my ideas is very important. When it comes to gathering or coming up with ideas, I don't find it that hard anymore and that's because I started using this technique to infinitely come up with video ideas a lot more easily. So let's say I wanted to talk about this camera. Instead of making one single video talking about the specs of this camera, I can still create that video, but I can also take this camera on a photo shoot and make a video with the behind the scenes. I can create a beginner setup guide for this camera, and I can make another video talking about some hacks that you may have not known about this camera. That's four short or even full length YouTube videos that I just came up with on the spot. Now part of the planning process includes scripting. When I first started, I would come up with an idea and then I would get right into filming that video with no script. What I realized after every video was that I spent a lot of time rambling on in my videos. I also realized that I missed a lot of important specs or important information that I wanted to talk about. Now a plan doesn't always need a full script. Some videos like this might just need some bullet points and an outline to keep me on track. When it comes to a cinematic video or even that recent short doc that I filmed, that required a lot more planning, like creating a storyboard, getting a shot list together, and even writing a script with questions. To organize all of these ideas, I use a platform called Notion. I actually use my own custom template, which you can pick up on my website, if you are serious about creating content. Now this is essentially everything I use to create content and it's a fairly simple setup. I use the Sony a7 IV or the Sony FX30 which I'm using to record this video. If I'm doing any vlogging or any videos I will use the 16 to 28 millimeter on the a7 IV. On the FX30 I'm using the Sigma 10 to 18 millimeter and this is because I like that 24 millimeter focal length for all of my videos. For audio, I like using this Rode VideoMic NTG. This is a great shotgun microphone, or I'll use these mics that I've been using for this video, and these are the Hollyland wireless lav mics. Now, all the gear that I am showing in this video will be linked down below if you guys are interested. Now, if I'm filming anything more than content, like a cinematic video or that little short doc that I filmed, then I am gonna use some more professional gear, like a wireless monitor, maybe some transmission systems, these cool wireless headsets, and get crazy with some lighting. Now once everything is planned and all my gear is ready, it's time for the easiest part of the process, and that's what I'm doing right now, filming. This is when I look back at my notes, my bullet points, or script, and start delivering all of that information to the camera. I record all of my videos in 4K, 422, 10 bit at 24 frames per second. Everything is shot in log so that I can color grade it to my liking in post. I also make sure to film any B-roll that I can use to overlay the talking head portions in my video. In some cases, I'm recording B-roll even when I'm out and about and I'm not even recording a video just so I have it for later. B-roll not only helps better explain what I'm talking about, but also helps keep the audience engaged. Now editing is by far the process that takes the longest time out of making a video, but over time and with more content that I've created, I've learned different techniques to help me edit faster, but also edit in a way that keeps my audience watching for a longer period of time. One of those things that help me edit faster, especially for short vertical content, is editing everything on one single timeline. I don't create multiple projects for every 30 to 60 second video because that's just dumb, I think. If I edit everything in one single timeline, I can just scroll through the timeline and grab assets like sound effects, certain titles, things that are pretty standard across all my videos, I can just grab them and copy them and paste them further down the timeline where I'm editing that new video. 
To get the highest quality video, I edit everything on a 4K 24 frames per second timeline. It doesn't matter if it's a full dedicated YouTube video, if it's a short vertical piece of content, everything is edited and exported at 4K. Now some tricks that I like to do, and I'd recommend you do the same to get a higher retention rate are hook your audience in. Whether you're planning a full dedicated YouTube video or a short vertical piece of content, when you're in the planning stage and you're scripting out your video, you wanna come up with a really good hook, especially for short vertical content. Because people are scrolling so fast and people's attention span isn't as long as it used to be, if you can hook them in, that viewer is obviously going to watch your video and watch it for longer. So for example, this is the difference between a bad hook and a good hook. Let's say I wanna talk about this camera. This is a Sony a7 IV. It's my favorite camera that I've been shooting with for years, and I personally think that it is the best hybrid camera you can buy on the market. That is a really bad hook. It's not only long, but it doesn't really catch your attention or make you wanna watch the video. Instead, I can make my video a lot more interesting by maybe catching my camera. This is a Sony a7 IV, and it might just be the best hybrid camera on the market. The second intro gets to the point a lot quicker, it's much simpler and a lot more engaging. Now remember, you can have all the best gear, but if your video isn't speaking to your viewer, if it isn't evoking some sort of emotion, or your viewer isn't watching until the end, then the video may have not performed like you wanted it to perform. So that's why I use Artlist. Artlist is a platform with thousands of copyright free music, sound effects, assets, stock footage, and now voiceovers. Yes, recently Artlist announced a brand new feature called voiceover AI. Instead of me telling you about it, I'll just let it tell you about itself. Whether you're a content creator or a filmmaker on a budget and is looking to use voiceovers to level up their videos, Artlist's new voiceover AI has got you covered. Just type anything you want to say, Choose a voice and click generate. In just seconds, you have your very own voiceover. There are so many voices to choose from to suit the vibe of your video. And you can even tweak the voices for different results. Located just off the coast of Lake Superior rests a small town called Thunder Bay. There were so many times I've wanted to use a voiceover for a quick reel, but never did because I didn't have the budget for it, but I also didn't have the time to wait. Now I can do that with my current Artlist plan in seconds. Then within the same platform, I can find the music, sound effects for my videos, even stock footage, which is just unreal. If you wanna check out Artlist or try this new voiceover AI feature for yourself, you can get two free months off any annual Artlist plan if you use the link in my description. Now here's some tips for adding music to your videos to keep your audience more engaged. For short videos, use exciting and engaging music. Make sure the song starts off slow for the intro, then has some sort of bass drop right after the intro to make the video a lot more exciting. It makes the video sound a lot better. Should you buy a 35 millimeter for portraits or a 50 millimeter for portraits? Personally, 35. Should you buy a 35 millimeter for portraits or a 50 millimeter for portraits? Personally, 35 millimeter. For videos like this cinematic spec commercial with no talking, cut your footage to the beat of the song. It makes a huge difference and makes the video flow a lot more easier. And lastly, you wanna use sound effects for any text that pops up to emphasize sounds that are already happening in the video. If you're showing photos, use a camera shutter or use risers to build up that tension and build up that moment just before the video starts. Also, like I mentioned, you wanna constantly change the pace and the visuals. Imagine a video like this, where I'm talking for 10, 20 minutes. 
it can get pretty boring. So depending on the video, I make sure that I cut all the dead space out, I have quick cuts, and I add a lot of B-roll to overlay with all of these talking head portions so that you don't get bored of just watching my face for 10, 20 minutes. That's essentially everything I use and do to create high quality video content. If your goal is to push out a lot of content, my last tip would be that I highly recommend scripting and filming in batches so you don't drain or stress yourself out. Make sure to check out Artlist using the link in the description down below for two months free off any annual plan. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.